Thing the recording. Okay, yeah, we are recording right now. Uh, so, hello, Hui Ping, also known Hi. as uh, NG. Uh, welcome. Okay, let me adjust myself. I'll look a bit to the right side. Okay, yeah. Uh, hi, NG. Uh, <laughs> welcome to this episode of uh, Inquest. Very happy to have you today. Uh, okay, a short introduction about you. So, NG. She is a nurse for a very long time, seven years. And uh, right now she is pursuing a passion in business. Uh, she has a thrift shop called uh, I Am. And she's also a foodie for, for two years already since COVID. Okay, Angie, welcome. Okay, let's do this. Uh, okay. Start off with your life. Um, can you tell me more about your life when you started growing up? Oh no, what happened? Can you hear me? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what I don't know what happened. Oh okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's continue. Yeah, you, you know, just tell me about yourself, your life growing up. Maybe a short introduction of your 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 childhood and and how it came mm. about until today. Oh, okay. So um, when I went to nursing, okay, poly, uh, polytechnic, Nanyang Poly, mm. uh, way before if you want to go back to the past, which is when I'm primary school, you know, when uh, they had a PSLE. Mm -hmm. So the score, the numbering. So I didn't do very well. And then I always, I even start failing exams since I'm Premi 1, 2 already. But I don't know how I fail exam in Premi 1 and 2. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, some people don't even study. They still can pass, right? So I'm not sure how. So. <laughs> and then uh, in PSLE, I didn't do really well. So I, I actually opt for uh, Premi, uh, Premi 6. I went to SEC 1, Normal Cat. Uh, at mm -hmm. Coltrane Presbyterian Secondary School. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, secondary school was a bit challenging. Uh, so, didn't really do well with a lot of subjects and stuff like that. Uh, but I only excel on maths, actually. My maths was always A and A and A. So, uh, I was so addicted to maths. <laughs> oh, I love okay. maths. <laughs> I come back to school, do maths. So, neat. So that's mm. that's how uh, I like to calculate stuff, and then uh, I like numberings and everything. So, uh, when I was sec four, no sec three, I actually mm -hmm. was uh in the in the in the class where you don't have to take N level in the next year. It's like a true train they call it. So mm. um, I actually got last in class, and then. And I think the teacher told me to go to another class for sec four and A. So which is I have to take my N level. So, so they that, move me to another class. Mm. So that is for yeah, what then, subject? Is it all, all just a uh, class? It was all the subject because I got lost in class and then I, I didn't score really good grades for to to even skip my N level. Because when you're a normal kid, you need to go through N level, right? But for that time, I actually can actually not go through N level, but because I did very bad, I got last in class. Therefore, I was kicked out to the other class, which mm. that has to take N level in the end. So I took N level. Uh, mm. I didn't do well at all. Uh, supposed to go IT, but mm. then I I opt to retain, and also not supposed to retain because my grade was so bad to even retain in school because there's some criteria. Everything also got criteria. Retain for sec four or sec five, or sec, sec four. four. Sec four. Yeah, because for I the N level, right? Yeah. I couldn't even take all level actually. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, uh, I actually um uh, retain one more year, extra year. So sec four N level I took, and then I proceed to my uh O level. So people spend like four years in secondary school. I spend a about six years in secondary school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so six. And then uh, after which my O level came, it, I didn't do really well. And then uh, supposed to go IT, 
So I only got like uh four four or six courses that allow me to go IT even. So not mm. even all courses in IT wants me, you know. Mm. So mm. because uh, I feel English. Because English and math is so important in uh, secondary school. So my English was like E8, not even D7. <laughs> it was mm. so bad. Mm-hmm. So uh, after which, I appealed some IT courses and I got rejected. Uh, I even had a rejection letter. I don't know where. But then after that, uh, <laughs> after that, uh, I actually say okay. Since they reject me, I go poly then. So I was quite <laughs> angry with myself. Like wow, why? I already spent six years in secondary school. I cannot. It's not IT is bad, but IT is another two years. You know, after to get diploma and stuff like that. So it's a, like a longer route, even longer. You know. Mm. So I went to polytechnic, uh, on like a normal weekday, and then I went with my friend, and then we just walk around, looking at the poly, uh, which is Nanyang Poly, because I stay nearby there. I used to, mm. and then uh after that uh. We walk past this uh, uh like auditorium. They say that DAE direct admission mm-hmm. exercise, and then I was like, okay, what is that? So then they say, oh, you don't know. I'm like, oh, nobody tell us <laughs> what is that. <laughs> so then we go check it out lah. So they just say, oh, simply just you know log in and then uh write type what course you want and what's your grade in your know, secondary school, what's the score in O-level, and then just apply. That's it. Simple. And mm-hmm. then if you get callback, that's it. It'll be great. If you don't get a callback, then like that. Lah. So, like, mm. since I'm there, why not give a chance and take a chance also, right? So, mm-hmm. I tried. I appeal nursing and actually media. Media. Mm-hmm. So, um, after which, um, I went back home. And then, uh, so as days goes by, I still have to apply my own causes that IT are not I'll be hopeless, you know. Okay. <laughs> so I apply the course that they give me, like about six courses that I have to choose within these six courses in the, like the whole Singapore, the IT, right? Mm. So I just choose like the, that one course there. And then after which I waited for the polytechnic one um i got in the id of course because it is the only course uh then after, like i think the day after when i got in the id like supposed to go to like my class first day of school i actually got a call from the polytechnic saying that hey uh, uh we want you to come for interview so then i was like okay uh why not just of course go for interview right so i take a leap of faith um, I was wondering, should I really continue IT or not? But I'm not even, I haven't even like enter poly or get in poly yet, you know. So hmm. I take a little faith. I actually withdraw from IT. Oh, I wrote wow. in a letter. Yeah, I wrote in a letter. Uh, hmm. I asked for refund because I already paid actually. I asked for refund. I'm not supposed to. I call hmm. in da da da, and then everything get refunded. I was out of the class. <laughs> Like, I haven't even attended class yet. I'm already out of IT. So, a few days later, uh, another call, so which is nursing and media, actually uh, want me to go down for interview. I was like, okay, uh, we go down for interview. So, mm. nursing was easy. Uh, just one interview with, like, three judges. Probably. Mm. So, that, that's it. And then the media was, like, three rounds of interview, which is drawing, SA, and uh, judges type so this three. So mm. uh, in conclusion, um, I actually uh, everything like those two causes that caught me and I went for interview, it, they actually accept me. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. So they actually accept me, and then uh, I was like, wow, lucky. Like I mean, like I yeah, I just. <laughs> Like really, really lucky. I'm not even, I don't have any call from them and all. Uh, getting in, probably will be homeless, no school at all to attend to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was. Um, uh, I mean, the whole situation building up to it, it was. It sounds like a story that 
I think people wouldn't really believe uh, you went into a poly not even knowing about this direct uh, admission exercise oh, and goodness. just just exploring and somehow somehow someone recommended you and oh. and you apply and then you actually got in also so it's like yeah the whole story just seems like a whole I don't want to say miracle, uh, it sounds a bit quatang, you know, exaggerated, but maybe it is or just a, yeah. like a constellation of ev- the, all the stars aligned, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, yeah, I think good. Uh, I think if people uh, might be in the same situation, you just, just go and try and apply for the DAE. I mean, who knows, maybe you actually can get in. So, uh, yeah, it was an interesting story. Uh, I thought that 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 story that you have. Okay, so speaking of uh, education, uh, let's talk about your ADHD and how it affected your education and uh, your other parts of your life. Maybe let's talk about the discovery when you first discovered uh, you had ADHD. So. When you found out that you have ADHD, and then you realize maybe this is all my my mistakes and my not so do not doing so well in my studies, it may be because of this ADHD. So when you discover it, how did it make you feel? Um actually when I discovered that I have ADHD, that's the answer for all, all the past few years that I've been going through. So then I realized there's like a there's like a closure and there's like a like a knowing what's the reason of why how I actually went through. So that's the reason then I realized, hey, yeah. So that's the answer of ADHD. So because I like I say, my education wise was like I took uh really long from uh and also I tried my very best to study as well. Uh usually I can't multitask. I only can focus in like one thing like maths and stuff like that. Just maths, uh, cause I love maths. Uh, then um, uh, like I say, like uh, after my po- okay poly, right? So it's job time, right? So because of my working, uh, jobs and everything. So when I was like in between twenty two years old to about twenty seven, like that, ish. So mm-hmm. the past five plus years. Um, I've been out of job and in of job, out of job, in of job, and counting. And people ask me like, hey, why are you hopping jobs? Like, why can't you just be stable? Or, uh, hey, why are you like, you know, like society thinks that, oh, you know, like you should like, you know, get a job, one job, good enough, and then just climb up the ladder and then uh, get promoted. And then, you know, this is how it, this is how it works. And then for me, it's like, no, it's not I don't want to stay in one job. It's like, they don't want me to stay in that job. So, um, so it's crazy. Like, people actually doubt me and ask me, like, why are you dropping hopping and stuff like that? Then I had to play along with me. It's like, oh, yeah, maybe it's not my kind of thing. Or maybe it's, maybe this job is not suit me. Or maybe I found a better one. I always have to, like, answer it. But actually, I want to say that actually, I did set. Actually, they didn't want me. Or actually... It's like uh da 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 you know that kind of thing. So every time I'm like covering the back blanket, right? It's rather than telling the revealing the truth. So uh okay, so within these five years, it was tough between twenty two and twenty seven because it's the year of knowing yourself. Uh, it's like the age prime age to get a job, uh, start a family or blah blah blah. That's what society thinks, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, prejudice on you and um. Uh, pressure like people pressure you and then and uh so within these five years uh i got like summary i think like out of job like somehow set it's about like 20 jobs like that yeah so that's a lot <laughs> that's mm. a lot uh i had one time it was very shocking uh i went to this private clinic i remember uh mm. i worked there one day I even came earlier, like one hour earlier, you know. Mm. You know, I never late before, you know. So mm. I I do my job, blah. Then after that, the next day, they say you don't have to come anymore. I'm like, 
like I just started first day and second day I was sick. And then well, that was like the shortest <laughs> period of me being sick. And I was like, I cried. Like, how on earth? Like, you don't even give me chance. It's the only first day of work and I got sick the next day. And it's insane. My mind was so blown away. I was like, oh my God, okay, maybe this is not my thing. Okay, fine. Then I go and find another job. The other job was uh, another clinic or so. It was also three days later I got sick. So I was like, okay. I need a break for now. <laughs> it was that that period, I think it was a end of year period. It was a very, very tough uh, period for me. I was wondering, what's wrong with me? Or what's like, is it something wrong with me? Like, you know, why people sent me so fast? But like, even like one day later, and it's like, hello, today, first day of class or first day of school or first day of job. They say you're out, like a drop off. <laughs> so I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah. So it's a bit crazy. So the past five years, then there's one time the last job that I had was a uh, was in the operating theater as a scrub nurse. Uh, this mm-hmm. girl came up to me saying that you know, you are good at work, you're very nice, you're very polite, uh, you're very kind, uh, you very hardworking. That's what one of the staff put me off, uh, saying that uh, all this stuff. Uh, but she yeah. said that one thing that you might do you think you might have ADHD? Then I was like, what's ADHD? Because in that time I didn't know what's ADHD actually. Mm-hmm. I never heard of it and stuff like that. So I Googled. Uh so I Googled and the symptoms and signs was like, oh, you only can focus on one thing, uh, you can do well, I'll excel if just one thing, if you love it, only for your passion and stuff like that. Uh those who had ADHD. ADHD was Michael Phelps, Justin Timberlake, uh, Emma Watson, and many more. And these are the people who actually, uh, when they love something, they will do go all out. So and then I realized, like, hey, it's not a bad thing because I love the time I remember I, I keep doing math, right? Maths the whole time after school. I don't do other subjects, but I don't do math. I excel very well. So probably, yeah. I might be ADHD and then I can't multitask also. And maybe uh like uh I, I can get distracted quite easily. Like, you know, you say something and then another person says something that I can get distracted already. I mean, that's normal, right? But uh some people can control but I like cannot like so many <laughs> distractions, mm. so I'll get distracted. So partially then I'll think about it like maybe it could be the answer that at all these five years or even my education years and uh, jobs and education might affect and the answer is actually I might have ADHD so I thought like why not go check it out whether I have ADHD or not so I went mm. to the SGH so I actually say like I, I see the doctor and then I ask like uh, do you think I might have ADHD and they give me a test and stuff like that to mm-hmm. write down and then they ask a lot of questions like Q&A a, uh, so they say I have ADHD. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, at first, um, like you say, you ask me uh, like, how do I respond? I mean, like I respond by like, okay, shock. But then it gave me a reason that all these past few years, the answer is that I had ADHD. So then mm. I do not have to cover again, like telling people like, oh, I'm hopping jobs and stuff like that. If I have ADHD, just say I have ADHD then. Like, I don't have to just uh, hide and then like saying that oh I might be I don't like this job and stuff. No, I if, if I have ADHD, I just say I have ADHD. Uh, know my weakness, know my mistake, and then I know my strength because ADHD strength is that once you like something, you excel in that area very well, and you know there's a lot of ADHD strength, so you can actually Google what are the ADHD strength. There's so many. So, which is actually, I do have, so it's really, yeah, I do have ADHD. <laughs> so, actually, Google is my best friend. <laughs> yeah. Mm, okay. Okay, let's move on to, I mean, yeah, the this ADHD thing. I would think that it's a condition that's not really well understood. Uh, people, I, I see a lot of people say they have ADHD, ADHD. They say it very casually. But it kind yeah. of, uh, how do you say this? Uh, 
makes it look like it's not a real condition, you know, like not really that serious. Oh, yeah, ADHD, okay. So, so people, mm -hmm. it cheapens the whole condition, uh, like people who actually have mm -hmm. it and who have it really bad. Then when you say you're ADHD, you think like you will lump it together with these people who just casually say they have ADHD. Mm -hmm. So you might not be taken seriously just because you have ADHD because of that. So I personally didn't know about this. So I saw the article that you were in. And then there was the doctor who mentioned it's not really well understood as well, this whole condition. So I think I have more research, I guess, is needed for the medical industry to understand this condition more than not be so stigmatized in uh, our society. Yeah. So let's hope to that next time we'll be more accepted yeah. in the future. So, correct. Mm. So uh, I feel like, like, you know, there's a, like, a, I think we are known as the invisible disability. So which is like, you know, like people are, dis some people are disabled, right? Dis disability, right? But uh, this is like invisible disability where like, you can't see, uh, but it's like a, like something that uh, a struggle and a, you can't break through it. So it's invisible to everybody. So I call it like invisible disability, no sense. And then uh, I feel like uh, ADHD is like, because uh, when I when I know that I have ADHD, I, I know the strength that ADHD has, I actually focus on it. And that's why I started this business, which is True Store IAM. So, uh, which is because people say I do business quite well. So I was like, oh, they say play, play only. Like, you know, like they say I do sales very fast. Then I was like, oh, maybe this is what they say. But I didn't know that my talent could be that, you know. So then mm -hmm. I also had passion in thrifting and all. So I thought like, why not make my own business? If no one wants to, okay, there's like a quote saying, if mm -hmm. no one wants to hire me, why not I hire myself? which is my, I'm the business owner and I do whatever I want. I make my own rules and therefore, if, I mean, uh, people sack me, I don't have to sack myself because this is my home. So, which is Trip Store IAM. So, that's why the Trip Store IAM is IAM. is I am being myself and I am being me and you being yourself and you yeah, being like who you are as a unique person. So, that's why this name came about if you don't mm. know <laughs> yeah i see okay then let's talk about your business then mm. so bring us through the conception and the start of this whole business that you are doing right now was there was it a built up or was it something that you actually wanted to do since when you were young or was there a uh, what's that light bulb moment? Is it? Uh, yeah, light bulb moment. Then, okay, I wanted to do this, or was it like a I wanted to do this since I was very young, that kind of thing. Okay, it was a light bulb moment. Yeah. Mm. So what happened? <laughs> and, what was? Yeah, the, uh, so it's trigger? crazy, right? Um, I I do this business at the mm. most weirdest time ever. It was during COVID period. So, mm. um, people fear business during COVID period, and I step up the game to do business during COVID period. So uh, what happened was, okay, so during COVID time, right, mm. I see and hear people losing their jobs, getting sacked also as well, because economy no good, uh, COVID, you know, uh, ruined a lot of people's life, uh, circuit breaker, uh, like the jail for everybody, da, da, da. And then I thought like, okay, okay, so that's one thing, okay. Uh, number two is because you see, if I create this business, I realize the thing right. Um, I can actually create jobs for people. People thrift at my store, they buy cheap stuff, and then they sell higher price. I create jobs for people. Number two is affordability for everybody because I want to build a community that you know, uh, like providing good service and good products and get affordable to everybody because. I mean, food-wise, uh, rice bowl is needed because now losing of jobs and people, you know, economy no good, 
Um, everything is rising. The taxes are increasing. The oil prices are increasing. Everything is rising. So why spend full price when you can pay half price item, right? So mm -hmm. people need to fit their rice bowl. So I create a, a system and a, um, a way that they can actually come to my store you know, instead of paying full price, they pay half price or less even. So, and and my quality is as as long as it's like good quality and good condition and clean. Before like people donate to me, they, I will tell them that, and then after that I filter the second round. So, I mean, I try my best because it's a lot of items I had uh, in my house. So, um, so therefore, this one is a, a way to actually help the community. And number two, environment. Uh, mm. because you can't keep producing new products like, like uh, I mean no offense but like big company they keep producing new products and new products um, it will definitely harm the environment in one way or another but you just like I say it's invisible you can't see it but it's actually affecting so it's like our money our planet right so mm. uh, save money and also save our planet and then uh, also thrift store it's also like a second home, like for me, like how my journey has been education and jobs and stuff like that. So like I say, uh, like this is like my second home and I hope to be having a second home for everybody. You know, they come in, you know, uh, they, they, they thrift and then they have fun, like a treasure hunt. Uh, they find things like, uh, like someone actually found, uh, went to my thrift store and found a gold ring actually. Yeah, and it's cost $400. I pawned it actually. Yeah, I called mm. the person who donate. Like, do you just in case just do a ring there or something? <laughs> but uh, the person say it's for uh, true store. So okay, fine. And then oh. I didn't know it was a gold ring till my customer told me because there's a number inside the ring. So it was quite wow, cool. Okay. I actually went to port and I really got four hundred dollars. It was all Instagram and Facebook. I actually posted everything there. Uh, you can actually take a look. And then like you know, I mean like now environment beats like uh everything. So I mean smart people choose green and then I mean of course time is now so second hand is like uh and even we have brand new stuff like, so not not saying what but it's just giving second hand a second chance is item and some who value more than you do like, that's all. Yeah. Mm. You know, researching about this thrift shop market and the whole business mm. of uh fashion, I did not know it was I think a lot of people also not are also not very sure of how uh, environmentally harmful for fast fashion or producing a new new clothes, a uh, new clothes or pants. So I think it's a good argument uh for people to buy second-hand goods. So I think mm. some of the challenges that or maybe uh, hesitation that people have is they think it's, it's maybe dirty or because it's pre-owned by someone, you know, they, they have some of the energy that's uh, tra tra transmuted to the clothes or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I think the environmentally friendly part is the is the motivator, I guess. It could be a good motivator for people to buy second-hand goods because I looked at your your Facebook, I think it was Facebook, either Facebook or Instagram profile. It mentioned that 100 billion items of clothing are delivered from factories uh, worldwide mm -hmm. in a year. And I thought, wow, that... That's a lot, yeah. 100 yeah, that's billion, a lot. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so and you every time you see, uh, you always hear of how the benefits of uh going to social is such environmentally friendly, but you don't know, okay, la, how how good am I contributing, right? Just by not buying from uh buying new clothes until you hear of the facts, then it made me think a bit, la, for me, la, personally. So, uh, yeah, that was very interesting. So, what do you think are the challenges for customers to actually buy the for the secondhand goods? What, oh, there's what, a lot of challenges. There's a lot. What, 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 what do you hear the most when you try, try and, maybe not try and convince you, tell them that you want to sell secondhand goods, then what's the most common uh, hesitation you hear from them. 
Okay, there's one time I was quite shocked. I was uh selling at like you know like a pop up booth at flea market like that. Um, uh, at I remember it was at where, in Bishan. Mm. Yeah, and then <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. So there's this lady who came out. Uh, came up to me. Uh, say they just pick the clothing and then uh directly at me and they're saying oh, this one and she's speaking in Chinese lah. 这个是新的还是旧的? Which is, is it new or is it old? And then I have to explain to her. I was like, uh, there is new one and there's old one. Because I mix everything. Because you know my shoe store has new one and also old one, right? New one that people never wear. And new one that the price is still on. They do donate, you know. They do donate. Uh, I mean, they are very generous people in Singapore. You just don't know. <laughs> okay. So, that, that, that's about that. And then she's like, uh, is it new or oh, then I was like, okay, there's a mix of everything, right? Then you know, she said, haha, but this one look like second hand, eh? all this all look like second hand, and she says, so loud, there we want here. Then after that, you know, she did say, eh, I don't want so dirty. Then she said, it's dirty, and then she said, everything here is dirty, and then you know what? She threw the clothes on the floor, and I'm like, oh. you woman, yeah, and then she just walk off. Then I'm like, oh, that was very rude, <laughs> it was oh. like. Auntie la, like 40 year old, 50 year old auntie in the market, that kind. Yeah. So I was like, hey dude, it's rude. And then and then I know that my audience are usually my target audience, you know, when every time you have business, right? Yeah, you definitely need to know what's your target audience. Um my target audience is Western and Filipino or Indonesian uh, slash a bit mixed. So this are my target audience. I rarely have any Chinese, like you say. People scared of secondhand clothes because they scared. Like either there's one superstitious, which is someone died already, and then now you, you know, you pass it on, pass it on. <laughs> you already drinking something, oh. and you pass it on, <laughs> and then people are like, oh, this one is someone died already. Where you wear this person clothes like, eh, ugh, bad, bad, bad luck, bad luck, right? Mm. That's why in, in okay, I'm not no no offense again, like. Mm. No offense, I'm Chinese also. I love Chinese. <laughs> but <laughs> Chinese culture majority, but not all, not all. Myself, I'm Chinese, right? So mm. I think differently. But mostly they think that uh Chinese people would think that secondhand is quite dirty. We'll just say the fact. Okay. Mm. They prefer new, brand new. Like in Chinese New Year, right? Nobody will want to buy secondhand clothes. Because people say, sing in the end, sing the Eli, which is like, new year, new me, new clothes, you have to buy. And I'm like, okay. But anyway, in Chinese New Year, I also got my trip from trip store as well. So I didn't buy new clothes also. So I'm trying to like break the culture in Singapore. It's really tough. But then I am so proud that I have made it for the two years because I'm starting to change people's mindset, uh, mm-hmm. breaking some boundaries. Uh, I even go school tours as well. I went to the top school in uh in Singapore. They actually uh called me and asked me to go for like a uh, school talk in their school, uh Nanyan Girls High School, which is mm. their patron you know. <laughs> so uh Mr. Lee you. So uh it was a very honored uh way to tell the girls there, the students saying that uh environment and thrifting and saving money is so important. So yeah. uh, they love it. They want to do collaboration with me. And we're going to start on April this year, actually. Uh, yeah. That put us out. Australia International School actually reached out to me as well. Uh, they also want to collaborate with me. Uh, so yeah. these are the schools that actually reach out to me. Uh, they actually kind of like support my dream and knowing that, hey, this person is actually making a voice out that, hey, second hand is actually not bad thing it's actually uh like you know be realistic it's helping the environment and saving money as well uh so it's giving second hand and second chance like there's some value more than you do right so uh like i said my audience is usually western and filipino but like i said i'm still trying to break the uh the barrier with uh, some people who still think uh second hand is dirty stay away from second hand and stuff like that but uh so far so good i mean you can't change everyone you can't please everyone this is business you can't please everyone 
even in life also you can't please everyone <laughs> so mm. uh, in fact I think true store I am make me feel like like I said the motto is I am you know be yourself uh, uniqueness you know uh, like a rainbow you know shine a light wherever you go no matter what um, what people say so as long you are three C consistent commitment and creativity so I realized that because of this has pushed me for these two years for my business yeah mm, I think it's uh it's good that you don't try to appeal to everyone uh, because yeah, that, that bunch of people who will never buy secondhand goods, no use trying to reach out to them. Do, do you think it's the mindset is changing for the young people? Because for me, I don't mind buying cheap uh, secondhand goods. Uh, if, if it's cheaper, sometimes I see Uniqlo, uh, I just want a simple clothes. Uh, especially I long sleeve, then I see forty dollars or is it forty or thirty? One of them. Uh, and I thought oh, I don't want to spend this much money. Then so uh, the first thing I'll do, I'll just look at carousel first to see and if there's thrifting. someone selling. Carousel do sell as so well, thrifting there. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you think it's it's the stigma is less for the younger generation? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, when I realize, um. Uh, we are getting there. I think the younger one, like the Gen Z and below, I think they are quite okay with uh, secondhand goods, actually. Um, uh, Majority, but I still feel there are some people still prefer brand new stuff. Uh, that one you cannot get away uh, because uh, definitely there are people, but uh, like I said, the younger one are actually starting to love like thrifting trendy kind of thing. So, uh, vintage stuff. So, I realized that I think slowly, I think when generation by generation, I think slowly it will get the voices out. Lah. But maybe like the 30s to 50s in between this age, I mm. think they're not very keen to thrifting usually. Usually, mm. the older ones still okay, but the middle age group like for now in 2023 year uh i think like the between 30s to 50s they're not very keen in thrifting so because i don't really see them <laughs> yeah, roughly but sometimes but not a lot yeah mm, i see oh and one thing mm -hmm. um yep. quite crazy because it's shopping right uh mm -hmm. the most majority of uh, my audience is actually males <laughs> is it yeah uh, then okay. one time people come to my warehouse, it's like all males. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but I do not have a lot of female. I mean, I do not have a lot of male clothing here. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. usually people donate other female clothes, but there are like, some male clothes there. Wait, so in terms of shoppers, you think the, the, when you've done this for two years, you see more, maybe not customers, or maybe observers and customers, more, more, more. There are more males than females. Yeah, usually, yeah. Ah, okay. So it's quite interesting. Um, uh, maybe males. Uh, I think I think my personal observing while wow, for these past two years, I think they are like okay to not spend so much on items. Uh, they like cheaper items. They like yeah, I was I that also. quality is good, everything. But as long I can fit my family, right? And I can fit my girlfriend or fit my wife, you know, and uh, mm. fit my children, it's fine. Yeah, so I think they are quite okay with thrifting. So this is what I observe. La. Yeah, I would think, <coughs> I'm thinking also as a guy, the most <laughs> practical reason would be the money part. Of it. It's just cheaper. Yeah, you guys right. are quite practical. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. okay, but I didn't expect that. I did not expect. Yeah. I thought it would be girls eh, who would be or females no, 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 and really. more. Yeah, I was quite surprised too. Yeah. Hmm. Do do you see how you can appeal to that that male market then? Because you mentioned more of the donation is female items, but then yes. the guys don't donate as much. So it's like your supply got it has more of the female stuff. Better, yeah. yeah, but the demand is more for the guys <laughs> than you have less. Um, but it's interesting that 
the males actually sometimes buy female clothes. Maybe it's for their wife and for their children. Oh, so, okay, I thought. So, yeah, so, so I'm actually quite okay. I think mostly a family guy, la, or not like boyfriend, boyfriend kind of uh, wait, uh, buy wait, girlfriend. Wait, stuff, wait yeah. hold on. How do you know they are buying for their for girlfriends or wives? <laughs> We, we trust on customer. <laughs> we say we'll probably buy no. yeah. You know, I was thinking, oh, okay. No, no. I, mean, I mean, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> la. so. Okay, let me just hope that, uh, yeah, they buy it for the right reasons. Hey, but, but you know, some clothes, <laughs> some girl wear girl stuff also, and some girl wear guy stuff as well, you know? You know? Uh, it's like I... common nowadays. Like you know, like boyfriend jeans, male also wear, girl also wear. So it's quite okay, la. I mean, like hoodie also, what uh, unisex hoodie, what uh, you you have that in the store. Mm. Guy also wear, girl also get wear, ma. You just want to wear, ma. Okay, okay. I mean, <laughs> that one okay, la. Unisex. Uh, that one is a bit easier, la. No one, no one can judge you, la, for buying a unisex one. Yeah, even I wear my boyfriend clothes, so it's okay. <laughs> mm. Okay, let's talk about your philanthropic uh, endeavors. So you have delivered your your clothes or your products to, so far I know, uh, two countries, uh, Philippines yeah. and uh, Turkey. Turkey, right? Turkey yeah. recently. Yeah. So... What is it like? Like, um, is there a specific item they are looking for, or is it, or is it like anything will do for them? Um, obviously, we will hear their request or what they really want. Uh, usually clothes. Mm. Uh, but then again, the country is it cold or not? Like Turkey is cold, winter clothes. That's for sure. For Philippines, some are could be hot, some are winter also. But then. We will ask like what they want. Is it is it their they are usually some or not like, See, ask their weather like down there. Um, then of course we will give them various stuff like infant to, to adult clothes mm. and stuff. So I mean, usually when you your typhoon come and then swipe everything and then you got no clothes to wear. Obviously, I think I'm sure every age are quite important because every age do need clothes. So yeah, so. Usually, I try to give variety stuff and I put the box and uh, just send there. Mm, yeah. Okay, I see. It's because, okay, let's talk about the Turkey one, which is quite recent, right? Yeah. So, you mentioned it was a very last minute one. So, take us through how the whole uh, packing and sending it to the, the, the plane, how, how was it like? It was very in. stressed <laughs> because, also. yeah, because um, they needed the items quite fast, and then like the day of Kree, and then the next day they asked for donation, and then mm. uh, uh, they also after that they moved to another place because it was very overwhelmed. Singaporean mm. donate a lot of the clothes, so they moved to uh, another place, which is Jetting Lane, and mm. then that day I had work. And I end at 7 p.m. I and they close at 7 p.m. I think. And then like how am I going to donate clothes, right? Mm. <laughs> so after which I actually try to reach out to them and ask, but then uh, a bit I think they're quite overwhelmed with a lot of messages. So I do understand. Mm. Then I thought why not just try my luck after work. Mm. I go down to the place where they actually had the all the donation there, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure they're still packing and stuff like that, right? Because they are very overwhelmed. So I thought I tried my luck again, go there mm-hmm. and ask if they want my winter coats and stuff like that. La. So because mm-hmm. I run a company trip store, right? So we want to help people as well, help the, mm-hmm. the, the nation, like those who you know who affected uh uh their homes because due to climate change and da da da. So then they say, Oh, uh they, they were people there and I was quite surprised. It was like 8 p.m. plus, we reached there. And then I asked, okay, and then they said, did you need me to close some more? La? So then I thought, okay, you uh, what are the deadline, what are the time that you guys go off? Hmm. They say uh, by 10 p.m., you have, we, the last truck will come and go. Already. 
So and then I was like eight plus already. <laughs> yeah, so, right. This was raining some more, you know, raining season. <laughs> then oh, after no. that, I I rush all. I rush to the warehouse. I pack, take one big box, ah, uh, then just put all the winter clothes in, and I make sure it's mm. all winter clothes, and then I label them. Uh, and then I put it out and then trolley and then go all the way back. And I try to not be 10 o'clock. I try to be there at 9.30 at least. So then, just nice. Eh? 9.30 they go eh? So I was like, oh. <laughs> I did them and it was the last truck. I actually took a picture. I actually posted it on Instagram, Facebook as well. Like, so yeah, there. I saw that. So then, yeah, I was so stressed. Eh? <laughs> but it was, oh, yeah. uh, when I gave it, when I gave the box, I, I felt really, uh, like, uh, really, really, and also I felt like, like, hey, Wow, I've done a good job. So, yeah, I promise. Yeah, you oh, yeah. did. You did do a yeah. good job. I mean, it was so last minute. I cannot imagine. Because before so that, minute, yeah. before that, you didn't, you were only informed on the day itself, is it? Or just a few days. And you weren't even packing even after you knew. Yeah, I wasn't packing, yeah. So, that yeah. means 7 p.m., you went there, which is around 8 o'clock. So 7 p.m., I end work. Yeah, and you end work. You went there, 8 o'clock. Then they say, okay, we got a bit more time. Then you went back to your warehouse. You packed. Warehouse. You, I saw your pictures. Yeah. Like, it's quite big, eh? It's quite a lot of stuff, yeah, eh? Yeah, very big. Yeah, it was so, very big. wait, then how do you transport so many things? By... Walking. Lake. What? Yeah! Running. Running with the trolley. Wait, so your items... Because were... so big. Even the car, I don't think it can fit. Uh, yeah. So your uh, your your warehouse that time was close to the 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 transporting area, is it? Uh no, it was like we'll just walk la. Because if we take car and all grab and it will take time also. So I think just walk. Yeah. yeah it, was so quite, where, it was quite rush. Where was the items huh? then? So that means I was thinking your when you went there, the logistics area, did they tell you you still got time? So you went back. So when you went back, it's it's your warehouse to pack, right? So to pack in the winter clothes, yeah. Yeah. So when you travel back, uh, you walk there. How how long did it take to walk with all your stuff? Yeah. You need to push all the things. About fifteen to twenty minutes. Wow. That I mean, yeah. So, so it's like I have to walk there and then come back again. Yeah. So okay, I saw a bit close, but still. It was a uh, amazing race. Uh, I was like running and all, uh, panting until wow. ten p.m. or like, whoa. Okay. Wow. That's very. <laughs> that's very impressive. Uh, I have to give you, you the the tip. What the hell? <laughs> this must be crazy, yeah. To do to do this yeah. within what less than three hours, right? Yeah. Yeah. Less around than even three. two hours. Yeah. Okay, wow. Okay, um, that's very philanthropic of you and can see your passion <laughs> to help out to these people. I think a lot of people were just, I uh, I give you item really, you're still so demanding, you still give me all these deadlines. I, I could see some people just not even doing it just because it's just too yeah. inconvenient uh, because of the timing, the time constraints. So kudos to you. Yeah. To helping out. Yeah, <laughs> so okay, let's talk about your challenges within these two years. What are your biggest challenges? Maybe unexpected ones like, that you didn't foresee when you started this whole business. Uh, but the you know the business uh for the past two years is actually every day has their own challenges, is either big or small. Hmm. Uh, okay. Maybe I would say one or two uh challenges. Uh, because there's a lot of challenges that you face in business. Because business is like up and down, like stock like that, you know, and it's unexpected hmm. kind of thing. Sometimes hmm. can you heart attack. Sometimes can you coma. <laughs> Sometimes can you a lot of weird stuff. Hmm. So, uh, one time, uh, I was depending on a this sale place, which is uh, uh, at this I think town area. And it was a private school and I was selling my stuff there because they allow me in the first place to sell my stuff there. So they okay. gave me a table and I sell stuff. And I earned uh, quite okay. 
Uh, and that was like my income sale because warehouse is very inconvenient for a lot of people. You see, you know, when they hear warehouse, they say, oh, I'll do. Oh, warehouse is like very far, deep in. Or, oh, you know, warehouse is uh, very like, ah, damn sad. You know that kind of thing? So, I mean, it's fine, it's fine. I also hear warehouse, I'm so sad also. <laughs> but then, that that was my income, right, for like, uh, to have free market there, you know, every, I think every Sunday or something like that, but not every Sunday, I don't really do like twice a month like that. So, mm. so I think there's one time, uh, I think someone came up to me saying that, I think you should stop selling here. Then I'm like, why? Then, uh, it was a very stupid, a, a stupid reason why they, he don't want me to sell here is just, just that because he just don't want me to sell here. I didn't do wrong thing, I didn't do anything, and then, um, and the principal allowed me to sell. It was a private school. It was it wasn't like a uh international school. It was like a school in the mall, like a management school or something. I don't know, like I don't know. Is it in a near Jalan Besar area there? Jalan. It's like a Jalan Besar area. There. Yeah, it's quite okay. crazy. It's like a ulu ulu kind of like inside inside the school, but it's a, a school they call it. So um anyway, like I that was my sale, right? So Suddenly he told me this, then I'm like, uh, okay, so then where's next, right? Wait, wait, wait. Then, this this person who said don't sell, he said don't sell the items at the school, is it? Yeah, correct. Why? What? What? Who is he so the in reason, the first place? Yeah, he's just an admin staff. <laughs> the principal actually allowed me to sell. So okay. he's admin staff, right? He's telling me not to sell here because he just don't want me to be here. That's what he said. And then I was like, oh, crazy. And then he got to tell the principal. Like, I don't know what he tell until the principal also, okay, like, I don't want to. Because you, principal is to protect their staff, or not like to make sure everyone is happy, right? Then if because mm-hmm. of, of the one of the MV staff not happy about me, then like that, all, then I was like, okay. Then my last day, right? So mm-hmm. then after that, uh, a few days later, I got news from Bishan because I do have a flea market at Bishan as well, right? Mm-hmm. So they called me saying that, oh, sorry, uh, you cannot sell here anymore because the uh, shop actually closed, somehow closed down. So they can't rent out the space for me as well. So the whole thing on close. So I'm like, okay, so I, I, I will lose Bisha customer. Lah. So uh, like that. So it was like a crazy week for that week because it was one close and then another close and then I have no sales, you know. Mm. So for the past like few months, I didn't have any really a lot of sale. So and then after that, uh, it was uh, up and down stuff. And then... Uh, and then slowly it pick up lah, uh, for this this year and last and last year also as well, like the mid year. So uh yeah, so I think I'm grateful. Uh, but there are a lot of challenges when it comes to business, really. Um, sometimes you just cannot remember all the challenges because you forgive and you forgo about it, <laughs> and you forget about it, really. <laughs> because it's a good thing that you forget. So uh, I rather you know. Uh, be happy of what I have right now. Mm. So it's mainly the unpredictability of the sales and maybe even people as well who are hosting you for you to sell your items. Sometimes it can be your sales might be good because for some reason uh, they have a bunch of friends, they bring their group of friends to come and then they buy a lot. Or it can be the 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 host who has their last minute changes uh, and not allow you mm. to sell there, which is weird eh? because if they agree with you and then you sell for a few days, unless you are making, you are causing some trouble to them, I don't understand why, why they would suddenly change their minds eh? unless, yeah, even the staff part a bit puzzling because the if the principal gave the green light already, why? Mm. Uh, like, uh, well, like I was... said, at the end of the day, you can't please everyone. Mm. Okay. Yep. So I leave with that. <laughs> mm. Okay. So, as someone who started a business, do you have any advice to give to people who wants to start their own business? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> um, uh, one sentence: business is not for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, why I say this? Um, 
business, you need to have the mental and physical uh, capability uh, in a way. In a way, uh, mental means uh, to take stress, pressure, to take unexpected stuff, uh, mm. uh, to solve problems as fast as possible. And also, um, you know, uh, a lot of mental thinking, uh, mm. solving, solutions and stuff like that and also uh physical is the labor work the logistic the the you know uh in and out in and out calling or 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 being alert uh even looking if it's online business then you have to always check on your emails and do all this also quite a lot of like little things like admin stuff and all and actually, business is like a one whole thing, one whole package. Uh, you need mm-hmm. to have all this. Uh, and plus a bonus, you need to have these specific characteristic traits. Determination, uh, positivity. You, you might sound like, yeah, uh, this person think, talking like, like some storytelling like that. Like uh, all these kind of things. Also, of course, you need to have all these things to do business. But when I say you really need to have all these characteristic traits. Because if you do not have, I don't think you can go far for business. Uh, because I, I personally know I am. Like I know myself. I do have. Uh, the traits that like, I'm really a very hardworking. I'm very, I can wake up very early, like four a.m. and then sleep very late. Mm. I I I I can focus on one thing, like I say, like how ADHD, right? The strength is like once you really addicted to this, you go out, which is bad and good because you have like you don't take care of your health. But that's the thing. But in, in a way, uh, determination I do have. Uh, perseverance and never give up spirit. Uh, all these little things you need to have la, because if you do not have uh, especially entrepreneurship is it's not just entrepreneurship it's like including your leadership skills as well uh, how you talk to people uh, I mean in, I mean business you have to make your customer happy right so uh, mm-hmm. if you don't make your customer happy even though you have a good food nobody will want to come and buy your food <laughs> if you are rude to your customer uh, same mm-hmm. thing la. so you need to be very orientated everything it's like a package and then that's why like I say it's not for everybody but uh, obviously if you love business you want to explore you can go all this all out but you must have this personality traits characteristic inside you yeah mm. I think a lot of people when they see business especially through the lens of uh, social media <laughs> They see all the glamours of it. Uh, Correct. And, and then Correct. the behind the scenes, the very the very minute details that people don't really want to go through, but it's really necessary. It's like the yeah, the behind the scenes that no one wants to do. Because when you see business, uh business owners or entrepreneurs, you only see the good stuff. And then all the behind the scenes, how much work they put in, you don't really see. So they might have this idea yeah. that it's just all, all roses and flowers, I guess, when uh, doing a business. Ah, how mm-hmm. difficult can it be? I'm sure it can do it also. And then you realize uh, the reality of it is uh, a lot of behind the scenes and a logistics that you have to deal with la, that yeah. most people probably right. don't want to deal with. All right. Um, like uh if you do research, right, all the business people like Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, uh and Disney, many more, okay. The behind the scenes they actually do say that they really, you know, sleep in the basement, they you know they know where to go, they are homeless, they they are so poor, uh ah, la la la, but nobody knows. But they they actually do some part that do actually show in social media. But Usually, like you say, also the same. Like your videos usually so glamorous and all. But if you do a deeper research, you actually can actually see all the facts and stuff. But they do have all in common, like you know, they're poor. They are, you know, they 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 fear a lot of times. They fear and fear dropout student. Oh, la la la. They they you know they lost a lot of stuff. Um, and 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 all these things journey for them. They actually persevere. 
determining uh, uh, what they want uh, and pursue their passion. And you see, that's why they have these personality traits they have in them. That's why they can go very far. So I think mm. people need to know that, uh, like I say, like you also said, uh, it, business is not glamorous at all. Uh, business, if it's successful, is because you work through hard shit for the past few years that nobody's seen behind the scene. Uh, only you yourself know and your people around you. Uh, therefore, the fruits are there and people see it and of course people praise you uh, from there. Uh, yeah. mm. So hard work, determination and passion necessary for a business. Okay. Let's jump into a topic that is a part of your life that is, is also it's rather significant uh, part of your life, being a nurse. So what were your motivations that made you want to do this job as a nurse? Um, as in, remember that we go back to the polytechnic period mm. where I only have two choices, right? Mm. Nursing and media. So uh, I got accepted for both and I thought like both also not bad. So uh, my friend actually tell me why not you just write the pros and the cons for each causes. Mm. So being practical person also, I'm not unrealistic. Mm. <laughs> so uh, I actually I wrote down each causes, the pros and the cons. And then realized that nursing has more pros than cons, which is because uh, now aging population, they need nurses. Healthcare is so important. Uh, everywhere you go, also need nurses. And then go over still, also need nurses. You got a license, you can travel all around the world, you also need nurses. Mm. And then nurses, healthcare workers, uh, it's so, you know, frontliners are so important. Like, you know, like, you remember, like, COVID, we, we mm. worked together before at Expo. Mm -hmm. What happened? The frontliners are the one who is being frontline, you know, like, mm -hmm. at the front line. And, yep. and we still have to work, you know. Mm. But which is a good thing because I'm still earning money. Mm. <laughs> which is a good thing. I'm not staying at home. Mm. But also, I can, can help the population. <laughs> so that's the good thing. So anyway, uh, there's a lot of like new hospital building clinics uh, in Singapore. Um, and uh, uh, they're quite into healthcare. La. So, and mm. also, being in nursing, I can actually learn like how to take care of myself. Uh, like I know like, medications, uh, what are the things not to do, what the things can do, like what happens if you have high blood pressure, what happens if you have diabetes. Uh, these are education that if I'm in the media, I won't know, right? <laughs> Somehow. Mm. Unless I have something wrong with me, then I go look it up. It's always like that. Mm. It's like, oh, I have like diabetes, then I go look it up. You know that kind of thing? But in nursing, you have to learn. Right? Mm -hmm. As a whole, so that I can take care of my, myself and my family member as well. So I thought, hey, hey, the pros of nursing has more than media, so then I choose nursing. Huh? So uh, mm. somehow, uh, of course, like uh, I develop uh, like helping people, a sense of helping people uh, even more. Uh, but um, I mean, nursing, there's a lot of ways of nursing, like in the war, in clinics, uh, school nurse, uh, uh, like even like... Uh, like a lot of a lot of places you can actually work at. So for me, I I I, I don't think I can fit ward because there's a lot of multitasks and all. But mm. I fit maybe nursing, maybe those in a vaccine center, like one to one, mm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Mm. I see. Okay. So it's the reason why you join the nursing industry is more of a practical purpose. Uh. So you can mm. for uh, what does that call rice bowl kind of thing. Uh. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know if it's just me. I often hear of stories of nurses not being treated well. I don't know if it's just a Singaporean effect uh, because people like to complain. Then, uh, you know, all this news about customer or patients abusing or mistreating the nurses, either by patients or the, even the doctors also. Uh. So, I was wondering... How true are these statements? And is there something that you would want Singaporeans to know about the nursing industry? Um, no offense, but um, 
I know governments are trying their best for helping the nurses, uh, even healthcare workers, uh, even like upgrading salaries, uh, uh, making sure their well-being is taken care of, everything like sweet, sweet, smooth, you know. So uh, for me, as a healthcare worker, I still feel there's a there's a demand there. Uh, there's always shortage of manpower and stuff like that. And that's that's real. That's that's the fact. Um, everywhere in nurses still. Uh, but in a way, I think the salary wise, if if you if you think that what we work is what we get paid then I think it's not uh, balanced enough. I feel like we should get paid more because mm. um, I think it's too little compared to other job scope in uh, like uh, other department that are more um, higher salary than nurses. Mm. The, if, because you see, if you want a demand, but the salary is so low, nobody wants to go to mm. nursing, right? Mm. So, uh, that's one. Number two is that I think we're still not very highly respect in Singapore because, mm. uh, I guess culture still doesn't break the thing because mm. olden days, they feel, I feel they think that we nurses are like made helper, like because majority, uh, are not locals. And, uh, you, I mean, it's true. You go to Tantok say you don't see any locals. But no offense also because they are, they are amazing. The foreigners are amazing. Just that they are not enough local. And then they, they also, like, you know, uh, like, you know, those people who are not really sick. Like, some people, like, uh, my patient, I remember one time, said, hey, can you, can you come here? Come here to comb my hair. I'm like, huh? Comb your hair. You can actually comb your hair. Oh, like, no, why do you need a service? I'm not giving you an A class service oh. in aeroplane, you know, business class, sweet girl. I'm giving you a uh, care, nursing care, not a uh, 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 <laughs> business sweet class service here. I'm not a, a waitress. I'm not a, I'm not a, I, I don't know, I'm not an air stewardess. They call me the comb hair to clean them like like you know uh like uh like do, do this weird thing open the water bottle for them and like like they they really got strength you know or even uh even the table is just, just next to them the cup is just there they asked me to bring the cup to them oh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> You know, and it's crazy and then they ask like ridiculous stuff I don't know like so many yeah so I mean I mean sorry um, but mm. in what I see in um, Australia western country and all they're really highly respected because I have a auntie who is actually a big wife at Sydney Australia who's really highly respected over there and she tell me like nursing pay are so high there so then I'm like okay then Singapore has to game up the system man <laughs> Yeah, um, in terms of the, I think there are two ways, one, uh, two ways that I guess Singapore can, uh, Singapore can improve on the medical industry. I think the first is, I don't know if this can be done by government or not, but I think it's more of a cultural thing uh, in Singapore. I'm not sure why yeah. people don't have that much respect for nurses. Actually, you guys do a lot. Eh? It's, customer service is one, one of the, because customer service, you have to face some uh, maybe very nasty people, and then with the with yeah. the uh, high uh, attrition rate, then you all have a uh, low manpower. Then you, I would think some if one of y'all go M take MC, then someone has to step up. Maybe they have to come back from work when they are taking their leave because of the short manpower. And then I, I also know that some nurses, you guys really go hands on a lot of things like if nurses puke or they take a shit you all have to clean up also for all of this so it's like when i hear this I'm like wow i definitely respect the nurses a lot more after <laughs> hearing your stories so yeah. yeah i think i think why singaporeans have the culture of maybe not as respecting the nurses it could be because of the pay because your pay is not as high right? so it's like mm, you're a bit correct. more so government should do something <laughs> i think the 
government knows this. That was they already acknowledge the low manpower, but I don't understand why they don't want to increase the pay. So uh, I I don't know uh, because in terms of the culture, the re- treating nurses with more respect, that one is a bit more difficult for the government to fix uh, because that is the people uh, you cannot enforce yeah. what yeah. culture treating yeah. people better. But pay, I think, is something is within more of their control. So. Ah yeah, I agree. Uh, I think nurses are respected for in in in, in other countries like uh, Europe or mm-hmm. Australia. Correct. The states as well. I think um that one I'm not sure, but definitely Europe. Yeah, states also. Mm. So yeah, um, uh, I, I really don't understand that aspect uh, for <laughs> Singaporeans. So I mean, I mean, like you see, you you work a lot, like. Nursing is like just so much job you have to handle, so much thing you have to do, uh, in like your one shift, entire shift, and you don't get as much pay as what what you work for. So the reason why, like I realized, uh, being a nurse for like seven years already, mm. uh, I come to a conclusion, uh, because the past few years I had was full time, full time, then COVID came. And then um now I'm part time. So I realized that part time earns more than full time. Oh, and really? Yeah. Correct. And part time is like like you pay what you get, pay hourly, you know, you pay what you get and stuff like that. So I think it's hmm. important like I realized like um having part time is actually somehow a better choice for uh for me. And I see a lot of locals are doing part time as well, so I don't really mm. really see any foreigners doing part time. Mm. So I guess I'm not the only one here. Yeah. Mm. I see. I was wondering, do you working as a nurse, have you witnessed or heard accounts of patients' last days? Like, uh, you know, maybe they have cancer, then they are they are about to go already because. Uh, it's at a terminal stage, that kind of thing. Have you witnessed those uh, no, patients? No, I've never witnessed them before, no. Never. Have you heard of any stories? Like, very profound kind of stories from your colleagues? Uh, I think I heard before, but I can't remember. But, I mean, I, I do feel like uh, there are, I think there's one, like, my friend, like, take care of her today and then next day they are gone. So it's quite scary. Like you realize that life is really unpredictable. And uh they're actually okay but the next day they're gone. It could be a healthy person also as well. So um yeah so it's a bit like um scary. So that's why I, like I realize all these kind of things like really treasure your loved ones and you know every moment is is like very important. Yeah. Mm. Okay, something that I want to talk about is uh, COVID. So when COVID first hit, I would think the biggest, I think your industry, the medical industry is the biggest hit uh, because everyone is looking to you for what what the hell do we do of this pandemic. So when it first, when it was first, announced maybe the Dorscon thing uh, turned to yellow or red. I think it was one of the colors. Uh. So what were the biggest changes in the in the medical industry that y'all had to adjust really quickly? Mm, like what? What do you mean? Um, I would think the search of uh, patients coming in or maybe mm. the procedures or of your the protocols that need to change immediately because mm. cause you guys are in the medical industry uh, then maybe let's say if you guys were sick and then you have to tell each other or inform one another or something like that uh, because uh, now this thing is uh, this COVID thing is so prevalent you all had to be even more careful uh, because you guys are mm-hmm. uh, medical mm-hmm. stuff yeah correct I think when uh this pandemic come, uh, came, uh, COVID. So, I think adapting for me is quite very fast. I adapt quite okay. I um, mean, the first few, first few days in Expo, I almost wanted to quit. It was quite hot. PPE, and wearing it, and then uh, doing a lot of things. 
there was a surge, right? Like you say. So mm. it was quite tiring. It was like morning to night. You don't see the sunlight. You were there also. Yeah. Mm. So it was quite crazy. And you're like enclosed with the area, you know, like four mm. walls, big, huge hall. Mm. And then after that, like, you know, um, it was quite tough uh, mentally and physically stressed also. <laughs> Because you cannot get sick also, yeah, like you say, once you get sick, then you have to test yourself, you know, mm. that kind of thing. So once you test, if it's positive, the whole family are affected, cannot go work, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. So it's quite stress in that way because, like, you're the bur- if you are the burden, you burden everybody else. So it's like, okay, I have to stay healthy. So every mm. time vitamin C, vitamin C, you know, that kind of thing. So, so okay. no, I really do think, I tried to take vitamin C when I was there, you know. So I really mm. quite uh so far okay. So mm. yeah, so then I think the 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 whole thing was like the stress and uh, all the all the quickly adapting it and also mm. uh yeah. So yeah, that's about it. Hmm. I would think there's a lot of oh yeah, maybe we give some context. Uh, uh you worked in the expo operations when I think it was the search of the COVID cases for the migrant workers, like a huge, yeah. very huge spike. So I think the government started opening the facilities in expo for them to house them, I guess. Uh, were you there on the first day or is it after a few days then you started helping out? Uh, I was there in about, I think May. May. Yeah, I think May it was, was around the was, start, right? Yeah, around the start. And then uh I it was so so funny. Uh the first day I went there, mm. uh, I thought, you know, I was trying to be casual and chill, right? Because I I heard that most people like stay here, you know, some people get depressed, you know, and stuff like that. Because mm. I mean they are I just, I mean, like, like in the jail, you know, they didn't do wrong things, you know, you can get depressed mm. somehow. And then if mm. things happen at overseas, your family are affected or your family die, you could even get more depressed, right? Mm. So I thought I would cheer people up, right? So I went to like the the hall, in the middle of the hall, and I saw this microphone and a speaker there and a laptop there. Mm. So I actually start um, calling everybody out. <laughs> Without anybody telling me what to do or not to do, I thought it's okay. Mm. So um, then I call them out, saying that hey, I introduced myself. I am happy here, my first day. Mm. You know, uh, you did like, this in your first day. You... First day you yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, okay. So I realized on. I I knew I got ADHD, so just what and like there out, you know, the counting. <laughs> so then I'll just you know, do what I need to do. <laughs> I just uh let them chill and then I tell them what they like. And then they say they like to dance. Then I dance. Then I dance mm. <laughs> I dance and one whole group start dancing, right? And then mm. the slow on I choose the music. People, the staff, health care worker was like wondering what happened they can hear because oh okay. Mm. And then they start coming and then some of them started to join me dancing, you know. <laughs> They thought it was a program or something. The other one, like I think, I think, uh, just join me lah. So, uh, no comments. The mm. next day, I was actually off, so I was at home. It was about eight a.m. Uh, mm. my phone kept vibrating, so I was wondering why. <laughs> and I actually went viral in uh storm and mothership and you name it everywhere. China News Asia, mm. um, the girl that danced at Expo. Like okay, that's me. But am I supposed to be proud of? <laughs> so, but then, uh, there's a lot of like insiders saying that you can't uh video, you can't show video, you can't take picture inside. But the mm. thing is that I did video. How am I videoing when the one dancing, right? <laughs> so, so it makes no sense. And then mm. um, someone actually, I think one of the migrant worker actually posted it. Like, it was actually a migrant worker. Mm. So um after which uh we started this dancing thing like, everyone was quite keen and everything. So um uh, after the viral everyone was quite happy. But the one that not happy is the high authority, which is uh uh like the I wouldn't say any like say names or what. 
So I'll mm. just say that it's the like the nurse that is senior one. Mm. Because uh infectious control, because when you dance, the PPE will somehow open up and mm. open up. Uh mm. or not uh either not just infectious control, other is professionalism because nurses have to be very professional. Mm. And I'm like, see, like I mean I feel like nursing is to care for patients, to care for people needs, to care mm. for their well being, to take care of their mentally and uh, like physical wise and everything. So I don't mm. find why uh people uh, like know that um uh, having like not like why do you want to make a big fuss of it lah because anyway they caught me down and then they like talked to me for like hours and stuff like that so uh I almost got sad you know at Expo if you didn't know okay yeah that's why I... I did tell you before like, yeah I almost got sad yeah because of professionalism and stuff like that it's like hello I mean I'm just doing my job but yes I know it's not supposed to but I just want to cheer people up, right? It's like people say you give them tissue, right? Oh, what? I just stare at them and then let them cry. Mm. Mm. So, so um, there are na- there are definitely nayers and there's definitely people who love it. So, uh, anyway, uh, it was all good. Uh, in the end, I stayed, and in the end, they let me stay. Uh, because the there were a group chat, right? What's that? chat uh for like hall three, hall four, hall two, right? Mm. Um, they actually. Uh, someone actually, I think one of the, the senior staff sister say, uh, like a manager say that, uh, you know, not supposed to do this, da da da. Uh, please be more professional or something. Like that. I think I screenshot before, but I I don't know where is it now. But mm. anyway, the rest of the people commented was all my fellow colleagues and stuff like that, saying that she's doing a good job. I think she do it very well. I think I love it. I love the video. Uh, da 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 da, because mm. everyone was like citing me. So it was like a, it's like a warfare. <laughs> it was a really a warfare. But anyway, whatever it is, uh, subject close. I know who she is, but uh, uh I don't wanna. It's okay. It's all good. Yeah. So I just do what I need to do. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> I think I'm not trying to side with her. I think for the senior manager, senior management team, for them it will be. It's just unpredictable though, because if anything happens, they'll be the one answering. So of course, I, I would think uh, they'll be a bit more panicky. Uh, this kind of thing go All viral. Right. You never know whether you, people will side with you. The public sentiment will like criticize you. Say, oh, well, uh, you all have COVID already. You still want to dance together. You might get po- more people infected. Or on the other side, it's like you want to take care of the welfare of these uh, patients right? because they are in this hall for what? How many days? At least one, two weeks, right? You cannot even go out to have natural sunlight. So it's like you need to take care of their well-being. If not, they'll go crazy inside. So you don't know the public will swing either way. So if if they do get criticized, then the higher ups, like the what multi-task force team uh, might go down on them and then they get punished. So but all right, all right. I don't know. I think but I think in the end it was a good thing you know, if you if you're ended, ended. Yeah, it was a uh, more positivity than the negativity side. La. So it was okay. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> I still thought something should have been done uh, to help the workers' <laughs> mental well being. Because I don't think there was anything, right, before this whole dancing thing. Uh no, not really. Not really. Yeah. So, but then uh I started to do out of the box la like um mm. beside the dancing I took some stuff like ping pong ball and uh mm. table tennis that one is I provide one you know and some mm. stationary uh uh some games and some I paste the wall decorate the wall all those are my uh most of the decos was from my house I took down and and I I bring all the way there. You know, because they can't they can't celebrate like Christmas, Christmas, they can't celebrate Chinese New Year, Chinese New Year outside. So I thought why not just put the festive at the background so they can take pictures, you know, stuff like that. So I think uh yeah, I just I mean I don't I mean some people might hate me for doing this, but I feel like what I stand, I feel like there's nothing wrong. But then again, um like I say again, 
can't please everyone. <laughs> mm. That's life. <laughs> yeah, I would think <sighs> I can understand their view uh, because they just want to follow protocol and Rules, they don't want yeah. to any trouble. Yeah, but still, if they can't, the, the patients can't do anything. It's it's mentally a struggle as well. Uh, to, to, to stay inside a place for so long, no sunlight. <laughs> you never s- have experienced your, what, what's going on outside. You can go crazy, yeah, this kind of thing. Correct. So, yeah, I think it was good eh, on your part to give a bit of leisure and relief. Thank At you. least something. Uh, it's just maybe not yeah. a lot, but... Yeah, but I mean, at least they all went up well, uh, you, uh, But yeah, it's unfortunate uh, that 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 this kind of thing uh, happened. But in terms of, uh, you almost got sacked if uh, people complain yeah. instead. So yeah, yeah. But it was. I mean, when I joined, it was the part where it wasn't that busy anymore. So. It was uh, all the rules already established, and uh, mm. everyone knew what to do. Really. So for my part, it was more of the easier mm. ones. Like, I just had to mm-hmm. follow the instructions. So, yep. but then when you went viral, right? Uh, how did it feel? Like uh, what mothership and straight times, right? Gave you a shout out, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, even uh, I think some Indian magazine also they say I should join Bollywood. I'm like. <laughs> yeah. Good, no? yeah, I mean actually uh when I my phone kept vibrating that moment, I was a bit shocked and then um the next moment I was like I I will straight go to the comments, right? I like to see the comments first. Because mm. I mean most people do so. So I was like, oh mostly quite okay. Then after that, I start to feel shook right? <laughs> quite mm. shook yeah, the feelings. Yeah, quite shook. Yeah. Then it went viral. Then then the, Never mind, then you went few thousand, right? Then at the moment, one hour later, I went up again. Ooh, like hundred thousand views, you know, then two hundred thousand views. It's like wow, hey, quite shock, man. <laughs> it's like your yeah, music video and that, like people can see you. Uh, but only behind you only, you cannot see your face. Uh. Mm. Wow, wake up, and then like oh. <laughs> I see. Was it was it overwhelming or not? I would did they recognize you or it's just behind you? Some do, really some do actually. I don't know how they actually recognize me from the back. Yeah, they uh, do. Okay, okay. But, uh, okay. Yeah, so I think uh, I think overwhelmed, yes, I quite overwhelmed because I've got a lot of messages, DMs, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, even friends, family, relatives asking me, is that you? Is that you? And I'm like, oh, that's you, it's me. Uh, I didn't uh, show my face. Like, how do you know? Mm. Then after that, they're like, is that you? Is that you? Is that a G? And I'm like, uh, like, how you know? But yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Then after that, I, then since everyone knows already, I just post on Insta story. Yeah. Just say, hey, I was like, hey, then everyone's going to see. So, okay, share some vibes. Mm, okay. Yeah. Happy to see it all ended well. Uh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, for nursing, right? Is there any advice that you would give to someone who wants to to be in the nursing or medical industry? Oh, okay. Like I say again, like you know, business is not for everyone. Nursing is not for everyone. Mm. Yeah. So, our uh, nursing, I think, if you really have the passion, you're not just taking care, but mm. overall, as a nurse, mm. like. As the nurse job, job, that kind of thing, uh, mm-hmm. and you really love a bit and you like it and you will go all out, yes, I think there you should follow your passion because they always say follow your passion, right? Mm. Uh, but if nursing is just your rice bowl, I feel like uh, just take time, uh, uh, take a step back, uh, thinking where you can go from next, like after the nursing. Where mm. can you go? Uh, mm. Either which department you want to go or which place you want to go. It's slow pace or very fast pace or, you know, whether you can take stress because mental health is so important because I feel nurses sometimes, they, they, they are so busy that sometimes they don't have break times or overtime, also no overtime pay. And then uh, break time, never mind. Eh. 
45 mm. minutes or, or sometimes you must come back within 15 minutes and they don't care. They will wow. pay you. Mm. I mean, it's within the shift they will pay you, right? But the way that you still have to come back to work and people usually break time is one hour or mm. you know some company give their staff two hour break and they mm. get paid still. But in a way, like you still have to come back to work like within 10 minutes or 15 minutes. I see nurses mm. like they take away Milo and then take away snacks and then they still come up to the wall, you know, they buy it, come up to the wall and eat there, like just nibble, nibble, you know. And then they mm. continue working there. They're a bit too, too like a, like no, not not uh, like 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 their well being is not taken care of lah. The nurses lah, I feel lah. Yeah. Mm. So someone who might want to seek a hot challenge, I guess, and uh, has a determination to serve. That kind of uh, characteristic that is required to be a nurse. Wow. Okay. Okay. Last few questions these are just fun fun questions uh. what aspects of life do you see gives you hope about the future uh as in what anything so uh the past few guests they've mentioned one is family uh one is uh writing down their goals just writing down their goals uh gave them a clearer sense of their future and to which they are more hopeful about. So mm. is there something that you view that makes you think, okay, this is the thing that gives me hope? The thing that gives me hope? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, the thing that gives me hope is, I mean, having a healthy, uh, being healthy, um, family are healthy, um, everyone is safe. Uh, that really give me hope, really la. I mean, sense of um, satis- satisfied, because you can you can have a lot of money in the world, but you are not satisfied, and uh, obviously, uh, you will still want to hope for more and more and more money, you know that kind of thing. So mm. I feel like. Every day, I'm actually living my best life. And I feel like I take it slow, uh, still do what I like, um, enjoy. Uh, mm. Especially, I'm a foodie, right? I love food, so I eat good food. Uh, and then treasure every moment because, like, you never know so. So, I feel mm. like that's already satisfied my day already. So, um, like, having a goal also, uh, also good. Uh, because I'm I'm a person with a lot of vision, uh, but then having a goal, I need to have action also, because you can have a lot of goal, have a lot of vision, have a lot of dreams, but you know action is meaningless. So I realized that the one thing that uh I struggle most is also um uh, like uh how to say uh what's it called what is this word called um discipline or what procrastinate procrastinate oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 so okay. I think a lot of people deal with la. It's not just me, <laughs> but uh, in a way, that's why um, goals are great, but action has to be taken. Also, uh, my my action will be taken, but not immediate. Sometimes, so it take like months, you know, later. So mm. my to do list always get longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. <laughs> so okay. I think uh, I think once I have my to do list to like you know cut 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 cut, then become no to do list, right? He already satisfied and give me the hope for the future also because I'm closer mm. to my dream and I'm closer to my goal, right? So mm. in a way, like one step, every action is closer to your dream and goal. So that mm. hopes for my future. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So the step by step, a little act of uh, progression gives you hope about yes. the future because yes. you're making right progress are uh, essentially because there's a uh, building a brick by brick what Rome yeah. isn't built in a day uh, so yeah, you have to yeah. lay every day's an effort okay right. that gives you hope okay one last fun question uh, do you believe in ghosts <laughs> why that question uh, just for fun I want to hear what people think um, okay Interesting question. 
Uh, I, I would say I believe in spirit. Would that consider ghosts? Then. Uh, I believe uh, in spirit. What's but, the difference? Uh, that, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so what's the difference, right? I don't know your ghost is the scary one and I want to kill you one, but uh, for me, I believe in good and bad spirit, and which is also ghosts, like I believe, but they're mm-hmm. good and bad. So, okay. Uh, why? Because uh, I do hear people, uh, I mean, especially in healthcare, right? Mm-hmm. When people oh, die. Oh, uh, I hear stories also of people yeah, in the hospitals. When okay. people die, they kind of float in the air and then uh they can see themselves uh at lying there and then uh people doing CP on them. Uh oh. in a way like the spirit wait, 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 are wait, still wait. there. Wait, 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 hold on. You mean the patients are describing this when they are like unconscious, they could see themselves. Uh it's like a it's like a friend friend of mine la, who said that la, but it wasn't like my patient that already tell me la. Oh so the oh the friend yeah. your friend saw himself like maybe he was unconscious but he could like see himself a friend, friend of mine yeah yeah they saw uh, then uh they somehow like uh like once they uh resuscitated the the it came back again uh. so like my oh. dad also my dad actually had a motorbike accident i think very many years ago but when i wasn't born yet he told me before uh he was actually unconscious and then mm. he, he actually his spirit actually left the body he actually saw himself lying on the ground uh accident and then uh people calling ambulance and stuff like that and he know who call you know who call who you know and then uh the moment the next moment he woke up in the hospital already oh. and then he said hey you're the one who called the ambulance right then the person was like how, how you know yeah so this kind of little thing oh. like spirits are real i feel the souls in your body, like somehow the spirit is there, but you just don't know where it goes. Somehow you know good place or bad place, you also don't know. So uh I feel like definitely I believe hell and heaven la. Yeah, as mm. based on I'm a Christian la, so yeah. Wow, okay. Uh well the I did not expect the the accident part where your father could see himself. Uh yeah, that one usually you hear stories like I don't know what, what kind of stories. Uh, like you hear footsteps, that kind of thing, right? The very typical ghost stories, right? Like you see oh, someone. Yeah. <laughs> but this one is see yourself, which is... Yeah. Yeah, I, I never... Don't hear that too often. But I can... I, I do hear... I mean, it's not often. Uh, not often that you hear this kind. But it's definitely interesting. Huh. Okay, so yeah. two, two of... Uh, two situations that are two ghost stories they are quite similar okay wow uh, but you never experienced on your own uh. have you experienced uh, that <clears throat> or something that you cannot explain doesn't have to be paranormal per se just something that no, like, oh, I don't have uh. okay no like, I do not have quite eye enough <laughs> Because I hear nurses, they have, especially they work night, uh, night shifts. Then you see the TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my friend con- also say they do see, they see. Uh, oh, so so there's one. Okay, there's secondary school friend of mine hmm. who actually um. Uh, okay, in the canteen, right? We are all sitting there, hmm. and then uh, she will say this like, "Oh, someone is actually beside you," you know. Then I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> who?" Uh, she, so basically she has third eye she can see things that we cannot see okay so uh well um not from her also but there are a few people who actually have heard that they have third eye so it's kind of scary but that means there are spirits actually out there because they do see but we can't see yeah hmm. so i mean it's best also not to see right <laughs> i think best hmm. i feel like she will see better not to see uh-huh. but yeah so in a way, I think uh, it's quite crazy, but I do believe in spirit. I mean, I mean, you see, like, I I know you, you know me. Um, I mean, after we leave this up, I'm sure that spirits are still there. Uh, it's just that the body will just die, decay. But I feel like the spirit is still there because I will. I feel like we. I still feel that I think we should recognize our own parents and stuff like that because. I mean, 
why are we why are we on this earth in the first place? <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Okay. Good. So that's all all the questions I have. Thank you, Thank Angie, you. for for coming up on this uh podcast. So uh, check out Angie's uh business, <laughs> Thrift Shop I am. I will put all your Instagram, your Facebook, your website on the description. Uh what else? What else do I need to shout out? Uh Hoodie Girl 13. Uh, what your your foodie your foodie website uh Instagram? Foodie girl. Oh, yeah, it's on Instagram lah. It's it's very obvious lah. It's F O O D I E G U R L one three. That's all. All right. Okay. I'll put that in the description so people can take a look. So everyone who is interested in thrift shop, please at least take a look. Not saying you have to buy because maybe you don't have the design. Sometimes no design lah, but I think it's good to at least check it out. Hey, who knows? Maybe there's something yeah. you like in the thrift shop. Not just clothes, right? Is there a lot of stuff apart from uh, clothes? Yeah, right? rice cooker, electric, uh, uh, multi cooker, everything. Like I almost like salvation army like that. <laughs> yeah, you can see some. You can also collect some stuff. Or some stuff I also see is like a bit different. I guess more niche. So yeah, mm. check her out put all the the details in the description now. so thank you ng for joining okay all the best all right bye-bye bye-bye